Alrighty, well, welcome back to the Cozy Cottage Homestead. Today we're going to be dehydrating bell peppers. First, I'd like to share a little bit of the fun facts and information about bell peppers. I think people think of bell peppers as just a little seasoning that there's no health benefit, no value to it. It just adds flavor to your food, and it does do all of that, but it's also very, um, very high in a lot of vitamins and minerals. That's very important to our health. So I want to share some of the stuff that I found. Thank goodness y'all can't see my dining room table behind me. It's got books everywhere collecting all my information. So I guess that's the beauty of setting up a camera. It's all on the other side of us, so you can't see all that mess. So, um, first thing that I found out is that records show that bell peppers had been used in cooking since 6000 BC. I don't know how they recorded all that and found all that information, but that's what, what it says. They are low in calories, rich in vitamin C, E, and K, B, B6, B9, K, K1. They are highly rich in antioxidants. Um, red, the green bell peppers, excuse me, bell peppers um, are used to, let me start over. Green bell peppers help to improve cataracts and muscular degeneration disease of the eyes. So it's very good for eyes and the eye health care. Um, the red bell peppers supposedly has more of the vitamin A in them, which helps improve your night vision. And also, as bell peppers get ripe, we like to pick them when they're green. Traditionally, according to my books, says if you let the green bell peppers stay out there longer and mature, when they get fully matured, they will turn red. And that's like at the end of the stage for the bell peppers. Um, the only problem with that is if you let your bell peppers turn red and they were green when you planted them, um, the plant will quit producing. So I think maybe without even knowing it, we always just pick the green bell peppers and then it would produce a few more bell peppers. So they do have red, yellow, a brown, a purple, a striped, orange, all different colors of bell peppers. But if you look up the science on them, most of them start out green and then they turn colors depending on what variety that they are. It helps to burn calories, which increases your metabolism. It can help you lose weight. And if you're having problems with diabetes, it helps control your diabetes. And also I learned this one, didn't know this one, it helps to improve your thyroid. As some of you know, I had thyroid surgery about a year ago due to an injury to my thyroid from the neck surgery that I received five years ago. So anyway, long story short, I'm now having more problems with my thyroid. I am having problems with my weight. I've always been fairly thin and stayed in pretty good shape, but all these health problems that I've been having with my neck and now my thyroid and my liver functions. My health is really fighting right now to stay healthy and get better. Um, I do have some tests coming up for my thyroid and then a few other outpatient procedures. We're gonna do put you to sleep, but I have a couple different tests coming up pretty soon. So keep me in your prayers as they try to find out what's going on so that I can get the feeling better and get on with what I like to do because this stuff hasn't been fun. It's slowing me down. I'm a busy body and I don't like it one bit. But eating bell peppers improves all of that with your thyroid and it's high in antioxidants. It's an anti-inflammatory. It also is has anti-cancer properties. It's supposed to help with I think prostate cancer, maybe your throat type of cancer. There's a couple different cancers. Not for sure on that. You'll have to look it up. But it's supposed to be really good for all of that. Um, it's also very high in vitamin C, which boosts your immune system. So you need to eat a lot of bell peppers. 
and you'll get way more than the recommended amount of vitamin C. I forgot to write down what that number was, but I think it's 200 times more than the recommended amount. The best thing about the vitamin C is when you consume it in fruits and vegetables, your body will get rid of the excess so you don't have to worry about overdoing it on the vitamin C. And those who have iron deficiency, my sister is one of them. I don't remember if she likes bell peppers or not, but I hope she does. Maybe she'll start if she doesn't. I think she does. Um, the, since it's so high in vitamin C, it helps to absorb the iron that's already in your body so that your body can use the iron. Therefore, you wouldn't be anemic anymore or iron deficiency. It helps your body to use the iron that your body already has. So that is wonderful. That was a great find there. Um, and if you are interested in knowing about more of the health benefits, I just want to list a few of them. The list goes on and on and on and on. It was just unbelievable how just a little old bell pepper has so much nutrition in it. Unbelievable. We like bell peppers. We pretty much add them to just about everything that we cook. My mother-in-law, I hear and I know, doesn't like bell peppers very much because she thinks they're all hot because most peppers are hot. Well, the bell pepper is the only part of the family. Any types of bell peppers, your yellow ones, your sweet ones, they're the only pepper out of the pepper family that is not hot. So, I bet she's going to go look that one up. So, it's very good for you, very good for your health. Today, I'm going to be dehydrating some, some bell peppers and sharing with you how to save the seeds so that you can replant them again next year. I have a bowl here of a bunch I already chopped up. So, I'm just going to go ahead and finish chopping these up. I don't know how anybody else does it. Just show you how I do it. I just cut the top off, pull the center out, and I don't rinse out it unless there's something wrong with it or a bug got in there. I just rinse it out. I even save the outside part. I just pull the little stem up, push the edge around it down, then I chop it up, and it goes on my dehydrator too. Um, dehydrating bell peppers. It's very simple. I like to dehydrate bell peppers because there's no additional steps that you have to do as far as like prepping it before you dehydrate it. You don't have to peel it. All you have to do is take the insides out, feel where the little seed pot is, and chop it up to whatever size you like to chop your bell peppers. I do like to cut some of them in longer lengths for like say pepper steak and some of these bell peppers I don't know if you can tell were like in between the stalks of the plants so they got a little misshaped those are perfect for dehydrating letting some of the other ones get a little bigger one of my most favorite recipes in the whole wide world I have a lot of stuff that I really like but one of my most favorite specialty dishes, I guess you could say, from all the people that's had it, um, is stuffed bell peppers. And not just any traditional stuffed bell peppers. I put shrimp in my bell peppers and make it kind of like a Creole. Not necessarily hot and spicy, but a lot of spices go in it. Make my own tomato sauce type sauce on the top. Um, really, really, really good. Making me hungry thinking about it. Once the bell peppers get bigger, I might have to do a little video on that for y'all. Save some of these and show you how to save the seeds. Very easy to save the seeds. So get them all ready first. I tend to get everything ready and then start cutting it all up at one time so that I'm finished with that process. And I might not chop them all up because I don't know how long this video is going to be. I guess I can speed past that part like I see some videos. Alright, I have a little styrofoam plate here. This was the hearts inside of the bell pepper. I'm going to walk closer so y'all can see the seeds. 
not the best at standing by the camera doing this, but I don't know if you can see this. That's the seeds. And I would just gently rub the, the seeds off. You probably can hear them hitting on the little plate. You only need a couple of bell peppers because to save for seeds. Let's see if we can see that. They blocked the glare. Um, I guess y'all might can see it. That's the little seeds. I'll keep collecting them. Um, walk back over here to my little station. Knock some of them off with your thumb. They do get kind of, they're not sticky like some seeds, but they will kind of stick to your skin. Right, as I was saying, the seeds do get a little sticky. Um, they're not as bad as some other vegetables. So they're just little tiny seeds. I usually let them sit out for about 24 hours and make sure they're not sticking to the little plate. And then after that, I let them sit for about five days and let them finish drying out. After they finish drying out, I put them in a envelope, a paper envelope, instead of a plastic Ziploc bag, because it's supposed to get some air. You don't want them to dry out and mold in the plastic, even though they're bone dry. So I put them in a little envelope and label them and put the date on it. And then I'll have more than enough bell pepper seeds for next year. So I cut the, the tops just however I feel like cutting them. Very easy to cut. I tend to do all them together. You just cut them whatever size you want them. There's no pre-treatment. You just wash them, clean them out. If you want to save a few seeds, save a few seeds. I'll give the insides to my little piggies. Yes, y'all, I'm spoiling them piggies. I know that they will come that they will be providing food for us, but Mr. Copper and Miss Molly, they're pets. They're going to be the ones passing down the meat babies, pork babies, however you want to say it, porky, piggy. <laughs> um, so I can spoil Miss Molly and Mr. Copper all I want to because they live here on the homestead. And their offspring is going to provide us food in the future. So I'm going to spoil them as I do most all of my animals. They're all spoiled. Most of the time I would just throw this in the compost. But now that we have the piggies, that is the compost. I throw them a lot of goodies from the garden. As you can see, this was the tops of, um, I think it's six, seven one small and um, six medium bell peppers. Just the lid, stuff that people would normally throw away. Made probably, I don't know, maybe a half a cup, a good half a cup of bell pepper right there. So don't throw them tops out. Take a little extra time and pick them off like that. I cut them in half and then make little lines in them. Little strips like you would for pepper steak. Um, then I chop it two or three times depending on how big it is. You want to make smaller diced bell pepper. I know some people like the look of it, the smaller bits and pieces. I like the texture. I like to notice bell pepper in my food when I'm eating it. So I tend to leave my onions and my bell peppers pretty decently sliced. Um, if they were for pizza or something like that, I might look them up a little smaller. <clears throat> I do like to have some of these in the freezer. Already chopped and ready to go to use first. Um, for pizza and different dishes, bell peppers are really good. Lots of people cook with bell peppers. You can just about put bell peppers in any food dish. So now knowing all the nutritional and health benefits of bell peppers, I already add a lot as it is, I definitely will enjoy knowing that I'm adding that much more health benefit to my family's diet and to myself. I could probably eat a raw bell pepper every day and would be just as happy as a lark. I tend to be in the garden and I do like my friend that I just found recently. 
And yes, I'll call her my friend because it seems like I've known her forever. Just walk around in your garden. She is really sweet. I just drew a blank on what her first name was. Oh, goodness. She'll have to forgive me. I'll think of it in a minute. But she's in Maine. She walks around her homestead picking her vegetables and it just brings laughter and joy to my heart because I do it all the time myself. My husband looks at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, what are you talking about here? Try it. It's great. So, he, he come from the country, but not necessarily a lot of gardening and homesteading. So, he loves it. He's all on board. He's doing great with it. But, um, he gets tickled at me for doing it. But it made me think of this new lady. Oh my gosh. I want to say her name's Laura Jean. Please forgive me if it's not Laura Jean. But I think it's Laura Jean. We do the same thing. We enjoy eating it straight fresh from the, from the garden. And some people would be like, oh my gosh, it's got insects on it. It's got this, it's got that. Uh, I ain't never had nothing. No insects, no parasites, no problems with nothing like that. But also know if you eat healthy and you eat the correct foods, everything has its separate little health benefit and you won't have any problems with all that stuff. I wouldn't even be having problems with my thyroid if it wouldn't have got damaged in a surgery. But it is what it is. I've endured a lot in my lifetime and I'll endure a whole lot more before it's over with. Pretty tough cookie. Pretty straightforward person. Always worked hard. I guess you could say play hard when I was younger. Used to give some four-wheelers and some horses a run for their money. Definitely used to like to go mud riding and riding horses. Um, it was a lot of fun when my son was growing up. We enjoyed riding horses and four-wheelers and mud riding. So, was no stranger to playing hard and working hard. We did all the above. Alright, I think I'm going to save these bell peppers that I have left to put in my supper. And I'm going to have this bite. Mm, so good. Move my seeds out the way. That was really good. I have to have another bite of that. Alright, let me get my dehydrator. Move this notebook out the way with my notes in it. I don't think we need the knife anymore. Just slide this over here. Nothing like a fresh bell pepper straight from your garden. Literally, that was picked this morning. This is the top of it. I'm just going to set it to the side. I usually keep adding them to them as I go. This is the bottom. Um, let me make sure I got my temperature right. I think I remember, but I don't want to say it wrong. You want to dehydrate it for about, let's see, where's it at? at about 125 degrees on your dehydrator and you want to let it go for 8 to 12 hours. Here we have humidity. I know lots of places have humidity. I'm not the only place on the map here in Louisiana but we do experience a lot of humidity. So I like to say that for those that don't know. Um, so I'll probably go closer to the 12 hours. You want them to be completely dry. You don't want to be able to see any moisture in the bell pepper at all. Zero. You want to be really, really, really dry. And after it's really dry, you would just put it in a mason jar, vacuum seal it, and put you an oxygen absorber in it, and date it. 
when you get ready to use your bell peppers, like to add it to, say, spaghetti or lasagna or whatever you want to add it to, casseroles, dishes, whatever. Um, you're only going to need about a fourth of a cup. And that fourth of a cup is going to give you pretty close to the size of one medium bell pepper. So depending on how much bell pepper you like, you could put less or you could put more. You also, if you want to rehydrate it, put you some bell pepper in a small measuring cup, like a one cup measuring cup. Put about one fourth or, well, I think it's one fourth of a cup equals about one medium bell pepper. I might have said that wrong. You have to just experiment with it. It doesn't bother me if I have more than what the recipe calls for. I don't follow recipes much anyway. But anyway, so if you stick you a, a um, measuring cup, put you about a half a cup of water, heat it up for about 30 seconds or so in the microwave, dump your quarter of a cup of dehydrated bell peppers in there, and let it sit on your counter while you're cooking and getting stuff going, and then add that to your dish, and it'll be like adding fresh bell peppers. Very simple, very easy. Uh, my dehydrator, I have two or three more trays that stack on top of this. So I can just keep going depending on how many bell peppers that I have. I chopped these bell peppers up last night. I grabbed a few more this morning. After I've chopped them, I'll put them in the refrigerator because I knew they were going in the dehydrator today. So, very simple, very easy. Most homesteading stuff I find is easy. It's just the prep work is what takes the longest to get things ready and things going. Um, I do have a jar right here. Of course, it's kind of not the cleanest. Bell peppers that are dehydrated. Kind of low. So, bell peppers came in just in time. Has the oxygen absorber in there have my lid on it. This one doesn't stay vacuum sealed because I use these bell peppers quite often. But it does stay by my stove. So if I don't have any fresh frozen or fresh bell peppers, I have some handy right there. Alright, I'm going to set this at 125 degrees. I will write on my little dry erase board what time it is so I know what time I started. That is important to write down when your start time is so you don't forget about it and it goes way too long or not long enough and you'll be frustrated. So I have that set at the 125. I'll let it go for probably eight hours and I will check my bell peppers. If it needs to go longer, I'll let it go longer. If not, that's it. I'm done with them. I'll put them in a jar and they'll store for a couple of years and I'll have fresh dehydrated bell peppers. So, um, very easy dehydrating food. The, the bell peppers to me are much easier because there's no prepping. You just wash them, clean out the insides, and chop them up and dehydrate them. Very simple, very easy. All right, y'all know what's better than frugal. It's free. Free is way better than frugal. And I don't mean free like freeloaders. I mean, sometimes you just get stuff for free, and it's a really good deal, but it's better than being frugal. So, it's also free to like, share, subscribe, and leave me some friendly comments. If you want more information, you can also email me at the Cozy Cottage Homestead at yahoo.com. And I also have a Facebook group for those of you that are new subscribers, if you're interested. It is the Cozy Cottage and the Country Cabin Homestead Facebook group. I share a lot of homesteading stuff and some silly stuff. It's kind of like my communication board because I don't have a whole lot of subscribers yet so I can't post a community post. But if you check on my Facebook group, sometimes I'll tell you about coming videos and kind of let you know what's going on around the homestead. So farewell homestead family, friends, and neighbors from the Cozy Cottage Homestead.